Hi, this is Patrick Wylan. I'm in lab group MO2, and I attended the physics and baseball lecture by Alan M. Nathan from the University of Illinois. Professor Nathan focused on two main concepts uh, during his presentation. The first was on uh, the bat ball collision at the moment of impact, and the second was the fly the baseball in the air. With the bat ball collision, uh, I thought that was very relevant to what we've been re learning recently in class on inelastic and elastic collisions. Uh, when this collision happens, it's very large forces uh, impacting each other for a very short time. So, uh, some of the things that really matter that can affect uh, the batted ball speed, which is how fast the ball goes off, uh, comes flying off the bat after the collision. Uh, the bat speed, the speed of the bat matters a lot. Uh, the velocity of the bat, it matters um, almost six times as much as the pitching speed. Uh, that the ball is pitched at, and we can really see that illustrated uh, when you compare bu uh, bunting when the bat is just held out and connects to the pitch that's thrown compared to hitting off a tee when it's just you're swinging the bat with and the pitch has zero velocity. Professor Nathan also gave us uh, some very interesting tidbits and stories. One was on Todd Frazier's no grip home run. Here you can see uh, Todd Frazier is basically, he let go of the bat, so basically the, the bat was thrown at the baseball and it made contact and he hit a home run with it. Uh, it kind of showed that your grip, or lack of grip in this case, uh, doesn't matter when you're hitting. Another interesting uh, fact he proved using physics was that corking uh, the bat that is hollowing out the inside of a wooden bat and putting a cork in it to lighten it does not increase the the speed of the ball coming off the bat. It uh, although it lightens the the bat, making it able to swing it faster, it does not uh, uh, give it more force coming off because the bat is lighter. When a uh, a bat connects with a ball. It, the bat vibrates because the, because it's a solid object and it's made up of atoms, so it vibrates. So it vibrates the least when it hits the sweet spot uh, near the top middle part of the bat. However, if it does not, uh, there's a chance that the bat can break. Here we see the bat breaking inward, and actually in this case we see with Hunter Pence, the bat makes contact with the ball three times. Uh, this is extremely irregular, but it creates some really interesting effects we can observe. Normally, when a bat, when, normally when a ball is pulled to the left, it'll have some spin to the left, pulling it towards the turn towards third base. However, in this case, when the ball is hit for the third time, it puts right spin on the ball, even though the ball is heading towards the third base side. So the ball is now heading towards the left, but it's spinning to the right. And that's going to throw off the shortstop here. As you can see, he jumps to the left first before going to the right. And by then it's too late. The ball has so much spin, it's already into the outfield. Very interesting play. Professor Nathan spent a good time talking about the knuckleball. Uh, 60 Minutes was here filming uh, segments of his presentation for use on the uh, knuckleball segment they're doing. Uh, here is a gif of R.A. Dickey's knuckleball, and it is just absolutely insane. He probably has no idea where it's going. The catcher has no idea where it's going. You can see the catcher barely catches it. The hitter has absolutely no chance here. He just has no choice but to watch it go by. You can see it breaks left initially, breaks right, and then breaks left again. Uh, you can probably tell there's a really lack of rotation on the ball. Uh, a normal fastball will rotate about 16 times. Here it m rotates about one time. That creates a lot of drag on one side of the ball. So it's just going to follow, uh, basically it's going to follow one of the seams. And it's going to move as much as it rotates. and Which is not a lot. So because it's so random, that's what makes it so hard to predict. Uh, every time the knuckleball is thrown, it's basically uh, thrown differently. 
So, and there's so many factors you have to take in when trying to make a formula to predict this. You have um, the number of rotations, the spin axis, there's a couple other factors he mentioned. Uh, it's just, there's, and it's so hard to think what is, uh, what is the pitcher thinking when he throws the knuckleball. It's just, it just makes it so difficult to predict. So in conclusion, I really enjoyed uh, Professor Nathan's lecture on the physics of baseball. Uh, just one final note, uh, some of his, basically the, the point of his research is to understand the game better, not to, not to change it. So he's not looking to go out and, and change how the game of baseball is played. He kind of said he identifies as a traditionalist. Um, and I thought that was kind of neat that he just only wanted to really understand the game he loves so much. Uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, goodbye.